Singular at the half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Welcome back to our New York studios in Singular at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and our score at halftime. Oregon off the last second three-pointer at the tail end of the first half, 41-28. The Ducks are in the lead. Clark. Well, they've done it despite turning the ball over 56% shooting. How about the 11 dimes assisting on 11 of their field goals? This is a very high octane offensive team, and they've done this, Greg, without their leading scorer, Freddie Jones. He's been on the bench with two fouls most of the half. All right, Clark, in the uh, matchup in Syracuse between Southern Illinois and UConn, the Huskies' lead is 10 at 40 to 30. They are a minute and a half into the second half. Let's go there live and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Roberts with the putback dunk in Southern Illinois with a good start to the second half after being down 12 at the intermission. Second wide open three look for Williams. Hadn't been able to connect. Huskies in white. Two seed in the east led by Karan Butler right here with 10 points. Short on the shot. Selvi tips it around. Picked up by Okafer. Just four points for the freshman. Roberts again. And last touch by UConn. Roberts on that drive right there. The real story keeping Southern Illinois in the game in the first half. He had 16 of their 28 first half points. Well, he, when he was in the Atlantic 10 as a freshman, he blocked 60 shots. In a tough league, he was the number one scorer for him at 13-6. Now, we're talking about four years ago. So you can see the experience that he has, the factor that he has to his advantage over Okafor. There's that reach again. And his second basket of the second half now giving him 20. He was the first freshman to lead the, the Hokies in scoring in 20 years way back when. Dearman clears. Roberts has given Okafor a real lesson in body positioning in this game. Something that Okafor hasn't seen yet. As a freshman shot blocker, only Alonzo Morning by one had more shot blocks his freshman year in the Big East than did Okafer, but tonight he's having a problem. Look at Roland Roberts again. This is the way he started the game. He's 11 of 13 from the field. He has 22 of their 36. And they have cut that halftime margin in half. Six point game in Syracuse. Roland Roberts is a man on the mission. Now watch this handoff. A clear out takes place. Rolling here, and he will merely roll to the basket in a weak pick and roll. Okafor out of position, and there is that release, Jim. He's done a tremendous job tonight using that upper body to create space for himself, and then the nice release on the half hook. Tremendous game. 11 for 13, 22 points against one of the best defensive centers in the country. Significant age difference in that matchup, and you're seeing what four extra years can do. Tipped up and around. UConn ball. Dearman couldn't hang on to it. Good UConn. positioning inside. UConn only one out of seven from the field in this half, and Okafor comes back. Now, one of the things that if you're UConn, and again, they probably got a little bit overconfident going in at halftime, thinking they had a big working margin. They need to get back to Gordon on the floor where they can get that outside game going. 15 to nothing in the first half from three. Butler misses the shot, tipped up and in, but no basket. Is this Dearman? It is on Dearman. So, 16.50 to play in the second half. Plenty of time. UConn with the lead by six. Roland Roberts is a joy to behold. He, he sure is, but I think they need to make some perimeter shots if they're going to have a chance to beat UConn. All right, Clark, uh, that'll do it for this edition of Singular at the Half. Thanks for joining us. We'll send you back to Madison, second half of Texas and Oregon after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz and by Warner Brothers Death to Smoochie. And we've been enjoying some of these pictures tonight from our Pontiac Vibe Skycam. Ten-point lead, Connecticut. Southern Illinois with the ball, trying to make another big comeback as they did against Georgia last week. Good set play, trying to get Williams. Gordon recognized it and really cut to the corner. Brooks 
three-point shot. That's the first three of the night for the Salukis. They had missed their first eight. Jim, two times this year, the Salukis have had six guys in double figures. When you take in consideration, in the first half, two players scored 24 of their 28 points. You know there's some points sitting somewhere for this team. Big shot by Brooks and Roberts with a near steal. UConn ball. Belcher back on the floor. He has three fouls. Hairston to the bench. Hairston has not hit a shot tonight, Billy. He's 0 for 5 from the field. He was 1 for 6 in the game against Georgia, so uh, in quite a drought here. Butler back out to Gord. Good no call by the official there. Willis trying to draw a cheap one against Butler. With the leg that's called on Willis. One of the things that is interesting uh, about Southern Illinois is the fact that with this outstanding year they've had, they came into the NCAA tournament as the worst free throw shooting team in the tournament. Yeah, last now, in you, their conference, uh, too. Yeah, last in the league, and that's a very unusual statistic to see of a team that's had such an outstanding season. There's a hole. And they're only two out of seven tonight from the free throw line. Well, one of the reasons the fourth Billy on Belcher. One of the reasons for that, obviously, is you've got Dearman and Roberts, both who have taken over 180 free throws this year. Roberts shooting 41 percent and Dearman 59 percent. Belcher sits the guard play uh, totally ineffective tonight, particularly on the offensive end for Southern Illinois. Doubled up, looking for an open man. There's Johnny Selby having a hard time with that catch. It's not his game. Gordon underneath, totally Brown. Smallest man in the game. Boy, Brown can move those feet defensively. He was actually beaten on that baseline drive and still got there. Brooks. Roberts tipped it. Brooks tries to save it. UConn ball. One of the things that would really concern you if you're Southern Illinois is this. You're having an incredible game by Roberts. And you notice, Jim, about the last four or five times down the floor, he has not seen the ball. And particularly in the fact that Hayes is in the game. You've been able to get Okafor on that bench. If you're Southern Illinois, you want to go to him. Go inside and kick it outside. Maybe you get some more looks for Williams. Southern Illinois trying to become the first Missouri Valley Conference team to make it to the Elite Eight since Wichita State in 1981. Roberts with the rebound. Those were great Wichita State teams. People got to remember that clubs like Cincinnati used to be in the Valley in the old days and made the five straight Final Fours. Williams still can't get it. Hairston put back and he'll head to the line. Hayes called for that one. Coming up after your local news tonight, stay tuned for The Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, don't miss the very funny Jack Black and music from the Foo Fighters, plus the top 10 complaints of the Survivor Castaways. That's all tonight on Dave after basketball and your late local news. Hairston at the line. You know, Jim, also, because of uh, some of the changes in conference affiliations, we, it hasn't been, we don't have to go back into the late 50s and early 60s in regard to that, but Tulsa was in the Sweet 16 in 94 and 95 when they were Missouri Valley Conference team. So, you know, it, it's not ancient history here. You know, the, the, the Missouri Valley has uh, really turned in upsets almost every year it seems you know Creighton beat Florida this year just look at the run by Southern Illinois in the two games Texas Tech and Georgia last year Indiana State over Oklahoma in 99 Southwest Missouri State won two games Wisconsin and Tennessee Creighton beat Louisville so very proud and heritage out of that Missouri Valley Conference come NCAA tournament time but again no team from the Valley into the Elite Eight since 1981 in Wichita State Trying to change that tonight. Saluki ball down seven. Of course, we can remember a Missouri Valley team called Indiana State. 1979. <laughs> yes, indeed. Got to that championship game without a loss until they faced Magic Johnson and Greg Kelser and company. Boy, Hayes is getting out there knowing he can afford to give up some fouls. Roberts. 
Strip free, and it's Butler. Doesn't have the numbers, but he does have the game. Probably should have pulled that back there. It was two on three. Really is different when you'd like to leak Brown to be handling that ball on that break. Ball knocked loose. Williams still struggling. Butler for UConn is only four of 12 from the field tonight. Well, Coming off the uh, second best NCAA tournament game by a Husky, only exceeded by Ray Allen's 36 against UCLA back in 95. His 34 of a week ago. Good box out and a rebound into the arms of Williams. There, Roberts wants that ball inside. They ought to go to him, particularly with Okafor on him and a little bit of foul trouble. If he gets it, he's going to try to drive on him. There he goes. It's the side of the backboard. And what happened there, Jim, is that Roberts realizes that he's got to carry the load offensively, and he wants that ball inside. His teammates haven't given it to him. Foul was called on Sylvester Willis, his third, and it's a one and one to the other end. How about this? Big 12 battle tomorrow for the first ticket to the Final Four. Missouri and Oklahoma tomorrow on CBS. Well, Oklahoma has uh, had their way with Missouri this year, but this is not the same Missouri team that people saw in regular season. Hayes Snyder's one. club is playing great basketball right now. And with their seed, you have to remember, they were down in the in the lower area of the top 10 at times this year and then uh, went into a funk in late January and most of February. Oklahoma beat Missouri back in January 84 71. Didn't face him in the tournament. Bowie lost control of it. They say touch last by the Huskies. Lead it the half was 12. It's now eight. Back in Madison, well, when you think of Oregon athletics, you often think of this guy, quarterback Joey Harrington. Joey, we showed you leading the cheers before. Don't you usually have a wig and you're waving the Danish flag? Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens in Matt Court stays in Matt Court. That's that's kind of a rule there. We've got a, a little crew of people. We have some fun at the games, but uh, you know, we try and bring some of that magic down here. Well, you know about passing. What do you think of the passing in your team? Oh, I love Ridden I love watching him play. He's just such a floor leader and, and just a, a great player top to bottom. They love having you here, and we'll see you next year in the NFL. Back to you, Vern. All right, Leslie, thank you. I think at the end of the year, Joey Harrington was playing about as well as anybody in college football. Now, let me ask you this, Vern, like, because you cover football, who's the best quarterback? Luke Ridden Hour? Oh. Or Joey? <laughs> oh. Well, how about here's Ridden Hour missing? How about the fact that Oregon. Conference champions in both sports doesn't happen often. It's amazing. And they had a terrific football team led by Joey Harrington. Here's Texas though on a 10-2 run. If Thomas could give him something in here, it really would help. Nice weak side. Erskine let it go a little early, and it goes in and out on the follow from Boddicker. Oh, Texas ball. Now that's what they have to do. Get after it. Be a little more aggressive, Vern. It was 13 at the half. It's five now. Time call. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, Sweet 16 action. Connecticut, the Big East regular season and tournament champions, leading by eight. Jim, one of the things you have to be concerned about if you're Jim Calhoun is the fact that you have not been able to put this game away. Southern Illinois, as we know, a good comeback team. There's Okafer's, hanging in here. Yep, Okafor's first block of the night, Billy. They are just kind of hanging in there. And I think there really hasn't been good concentration by Connecticut to get the three point shot working. They have a big advantage in that area. When Gordon was in the game, he's now on the bench, particularly in the first half. There's that great timing by Okafor staying right on the floor, going straight up. 
He never comes down with those hands to pick up cheap fouls. And of course, he'd rather be blocking the shot by Dearman than against Roberts, who's been able to put it away all night. We had a jump ball at the other end. The arrow belongs to the Salukis, trying to cut into that eight-point margin. Good. Williams, hit. left hand, and Okafer, strong rebound. Numbers here for the Huskies. Robertson, right side, banks it home. Ten-point net game. Robertson likes that shot, the little pull-up one-hander. And you see how much more effective Connecticut is if they can get Brown the ball in the center of that break. Southern Illinois with Roberts on the bench. Three-point shot, front of the rim. Now one for 11 from three. Up ahead, Talik Brown, the trailer is Okafer. Timeout, timeout Southern Illinois. Got to get Roberts back in the game. The dunk by Okafer that ties the largest margin of the night. 12-point lead. Time the NCAA tournament has visited the University of Wisconsin campus. Texas has fought back. They trailed by five, 51-46. And an early rebounding edge as Texas is on a 10-2 run has dissipated. They now uh, have lead. Uh, have eight rebounds more than Oregon does. Well, I think the big concern of Barnes, as he expressed it to Leslie Visser, was that not running their offense, but now they've also become, they've got to become physical. Attack the glass, be a presence under there. Freddie Williams and Sid Mill Harris out of the timeout on the floor for the Longhorns. And here's Erskine going left side. Man for man, Oregon defense. And Williams backs it out. Looks inside, nothing there. Here's Boddicker has to come and get the ball. Michaelis is back in the floor for the Ducks, and he's guarding Boddicker. Yeah, that's a, they should be able to get Boddicker free if they want him. Williams off the dribble, yes. foul. Got the basket and shoots the free throw. What a combo situation they have. They can play the two little guys together, Ford or Williams. He can be explosive. We mentioned his injuries, his difficulty. And how about that cross? You can't get down that low. A little hang time, a little kiss for the folks in Austin. Well, it might shape them up a little bit. They need some energy. And Ernie Katz going to his bench with three fresh bodies coming on the floor as Williams tries to get the three-point play. Not there, but Boddicker gets the board. Great reaction. Didn't Texas. squeeze him. Now, Harris, the entry pass. Thomas goes to his right, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, Quist underneath uh, just got a piece of the arm, uh, but you open up a passing lane as easily as that, even a guy that doesn't think offense, you will be able to do some damage. And Thomas goes to the free throw line, shooting two. He is a 64% free throw shooter. Tonight on the Emmy Award winning Late Show with David Letterman, don't miss the very funny Jack Black and music from the Foo Fighters, plus the top 10 complaints of the Survivor Castaways tonight on Dave here on CBS. Did you see that note where uh, they call Thomas Mama's Boy? Because uh, I guess Rick kicked up the Mama's Boy. She talked him out of playing football. You know, they got tough. He can play any sport he wants with that body, but it's turned out great for him. Big advantage in the hole for Texas with him. But misses two at the line, and the uh, lead stays at three. Now here's Jackson. A little quieter in the second half so far. And Jones, speaking of quiet from the corner. Now Williams, Boddicker for three. This could tie it. And that's that matchup, Burns. They don't want to come out. It isn't a good one. Great recognition by the Longhorns. Off the bench, Boddicker has 11. Texas has overcome a 13-point halftime deficit. There's Jackson. Oh, we got it. I mean, he hesitates. He glides. He avoids the defense. Going to his left hand as well. That stops a 15-2 Texas run. Harris off balance. Rebound. Jones. Good elevation to get that ball. And Vern, what they do now is he likes to come across with that left hand, Jackson. This time, Jones with the slip pass. There's Johnson underneath, and Boddicker for Texas. Fifty-three, fifty-one. Oregon as Texas has uh, 
had a 15-2 run, and they have come back to tie it for the moment, but now four unanswered. Rittenauer with this basket, and Oregon's up 55-51. And, Vern, excuse me, how he stops, changes the speed, and has a wonderful feel of where to put it up on the box. Great-looking kiss delivery. Texas Trail 41-28 at the break. They fought back on that 15-2 run to tie it up at 51, but now find themselves trailing by four. Erskine, two more. Tell you what, they just want to Erskine. guard him out there, Johnson. Erskine taking advantage. He backed way off. Erskine with six. Dejanal Erskine, that's a two-point Oregon lead. Jackson had 17 at the halftime break. Robert Johnson guarded by Thomas. Jackson on the floor, and then with the beautiful pass. Christofferson too strong, but the offensive board, here's Rittenauer. How about that stroke to the extra pass? So unselfish. A little dagger from the top. Rittenauer has 15. Texas trailing by five. Boy, Christofferson's got to finish plays like that, though. What a magnificent feat initially by Jackson. Sidmill Harris guarded by Rittenauer. Under 10 to go. And Vern, it's key how they rest their players, I think. A lot of fatigue is going to be important down the stretch. Rick Barnes is going to put four fresh bodies on the floor here at the next dead ball. Here's Erskine. In the lane, adjusting. The tip, no good. Battle for it, and Jones comes out for Oregon. He's got Jackson leaking right. And here we go. What a look. They all can run. They all can fill a lane, and Rick Barnes a little upset at that run out. And I think, as you noted, the subs are coming in. Texas grabbing the trousers. Open floor. Oregon, the Ducks are king. Finished by Jackson. This is a seven-point Oregon lead off the tie at 51 all. Take another look. Well, this is why you have long trousers, so you have more to grab. You just see Texas unable to get back. I was wondering the reason they hit the kneecaps, but the ability to run the floor now, the key is spacing. And I think you're going to have to do some things if you're Ernie Kent, too, to get Ridnauers a blow, Jackson a blow. Straight up, man to man. Now Roy L. Ivey, T.J. Ford back on the floor. Boddicker stays there, Jason Klotz is also on for the horns. Here's Brandon Mouton. Gets the screen from Boddicker. That's that uh, little drift out. Run especially well with T.J. Ford. With the ball, here's Ivy up and under. Oh. No, Christopherson for Oregon. But Ivy goes down to the floor and gets it back. He's looking for the timeout, and he gets it. Heads up play. Tonight, Texas. Texas time, seven points, 60-53. The night he averages 16. Well, he stayed out of foul trouble here in the second half, and that's really important. So there's no reason to hold back now. He had two early ones that really curtailed his play in the first half. Selvi setting up down inside again. He should be looking opposite for a three-point shot for Gordon. Okafor spins away and he'll head to the line for a pair. Just under nine remaining Oregon leading by seven and uh, Boddicker with 11 of those 23 off the Texas bench. Yeah, he's done a solid job and they've been great, great contributors. It's now the ability to finish around the rim and that's why fatigue plays a part. Can you take a hit and knock it down? Royal Ivy on the floor for Texas. Here's Brandon Luton and that one's saved. But there's Luke Ridenauer for Oregon. 14 Texas turnovers. Uh, wasted opportunity on that trip by Texas. Now Ernie can't up coaching away from the box. They can hear him. <laughs> he said it's been a joy to coach these guys. I mean, they worked hard all summer. Rat games. They would get into the gym yeah. led by Rittenauer and play basketball from 8 o'clock in the morning till 2 in the morning. And you know who ran that? It was Rittenauer. You'd have to ask them. They all followed the leader. Two on the shot clock. Not there. Here's T.J. Ford for Texas. And a bump from Rittenauer. Now you notice you think he's getting a little bit tired. Well, I think what you've got to do is decide when you're going to take him out. This might be a good time now. Get the timeout, give him a minute, give him a blow. They'll lead him down the stretch. Texas is not going to go away, Byrne. Zone doesn't mind going inside in traffic. 
Belcher right here with the ball on the floor with four fouls. Dearman has four as well. He's come right out of his sneaker. Dearman with one shoe. The sneaker which has R.I.P. in there. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Thelma. We're talking about Tri his grandmother. grandmother. Yep. Passed away earlier in the season. So he doesn't have that shoe on right now. Belcher, baseliner. And the officials do not call timeout and aren't supposed to. Kent Williams fouled on the way up. There's a break for Southern Illinois. You see him get an opportunity to put that shoe back on now. It was a good break. If they'd had to gone down the defensive end of the floor, he would have been uh, shoeless Joe Jackson going down there. You see him slipping and sliding. Actually, he walked. No call on it. Tough to keep your balance without a sneaker on. Walk right out of his shoe. Williams at the line. That foul was on to Leak Brown, Billy. And that's four for him. Well, Willis that, back in. Willis in for the Salukis. What is difficult right there for Jim Calhoun's club? You want to have to leak on the floor for ball handling purposes with the lead going down the stretch. Not the best of free throw shooters, but he does know how to distribute. And after the Salukis missed their first five free throws in the game, they've hit six in a row. They've cut the game to eight. Now Williams is 74% free throw shooter, so. He is not the reason this team is down last in their league in free throw shooting. Roberts with his second foul. You'd have to question his judgment on that one, Jim, about the only thing he's done wrong all night. As a shot blocker, you don't want him out there guarding Gordon on the perimeter. Gordon will shoot two at the line. Ben Gordon, freshman from Mount Vernon, New York. Born April the 4th, 1983, the day North Carolina State beat Houston for the national championship. You brought it up this time. I didn't. I, <laughs> and then, of course, UConn advancing here to the Sweet 16 with a win over NC State last Sunday in Washington. Well, you know, he had that huge game in the first round of the Big East Tournament, 23 points, but hit that big one to beat Villanova, 72-70. Had it not been for that, they would might not even be the Big East champions. The Cinderella Southern Illinois Salukis just won't go away. Dearman inside. That's off the hands of Okafer. Southern Illinois ball. They were down 12 at halftime. Cut it to within six on one occasion in this half. And now it's been a margin between six and 12 the rest of the way. How about the adjustment of those hands by Okafer? That ball he thought was going to be thrown over the top of him. Had his hands up, dropped them down to make the interception. Or the deflection, rather. Southern Illinois hit only one out of 12 from three. Great double down by Selby. Selby read it. Butler able to get free from Hairston. Back to Butler from Okafer. Great passing by the Huskies. Belcher on the break. Belcher should have held his ground down the middle. This is where Roberts loves it. Look at how he used that body. He just took Okafer and put him back underneath the basket. Jumper over Christofferson and in. How's that for confidence? Great pull up jumper. They got a timeout here. Maybe some, an injury. Let's see what they're doing. Uh, somebody may have some blood on the jersey as Teddy Valentine's pointing it out. Pretty good offensive play. The time has been called. Rittenauer gets about a three minute rest. That's in real time. He's back on the floor. He's in Brown. Ten fouls he can give up in that center position. Roberts made a free throw. Not made him up. How about that? Drained him. Approaching the five minute mark. UConn's been in control the whole way, but never able to break it open. Now Gordon has to handle the ball with Leek Brown out. That takes away some of his shooting ability. Selvey rejected by Roberts. Charge, isn't it? I think it's going to be a charge on Selby. It is. I don't know what Johnny Selby was thinking about with a shot blocker like Roberts in the game. You can't afford to commit from the top of the key just as you can against Connecticut when Okafor is in there. Willis drew it for the Salukis. Big trip here. Maybe this is the time they'll find the range from behind the arc having hit only one tonight that was by Darren Brooks you notice they haven't gone inside and out very often to try to get Williams the ball Dearman fouled by Selby and that's four on Selby 
doing a terrific job getting that ball down inside. Nobody fronting the low post. The CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Front backcourt scoring. And the Huskies have uh, doubled the number on Southern Illinois. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. Dearman to shoot two. Jimmy wouldn't expect anything else from Bruce Weber who as you mentioned spent 18 years with Gene Cady. You know the discipline that Gene requires and here with Dearman and Roberts the two key players that he has in his front line. He benched both of them for being late for practice for the first NCAA tournament game. Now that takes that takes some discipline and dedication on the part of a coach and his staff. Williams will sit for just a moment. It's the only time they didn't have the same starting lineup all season long. Yep, went into it starting four guards in that game. Sends a real message to people that are to be punctual. Justin Brown in for UConn. Now with Bre when Talik Brown out of the game right now. Good job to pick up full court pressure by Southern Illinois. Jim Calhoun may be forced to bring him back in even with four fouls. Butler back in and on Bowie. He wants to take him. Hayes with Huge. the rebound and a new 35 for UConn. And Jim Calhoun's calling for a timeout. He wants a timeout. That was a huge rebound for Connecticut. Up seven, opportunity to have a change of possession right there. Jim Calhoun was very fortunate. Talik Brown's coming back in. 60-53, Connecticut, 4-11 left. It's Christofferson, that make that three-team foul. Well, it's a hard-played game, Vern, and yet uh, they're getting good looks. A lot of open floor opportunities for Oregon, and Ford not getting in the lanes. That's why Texas is not getting in the line a lot. And that is the third foul on Klotz. And Christofferson back at the line. All right, Billy, I want you to pay attention to this. Uh -huh. When Baby Bob speaks, America listens. Last week, over 15 million people saw the new hit comedy with a lot to say, Baby Bob. Right after the King of Queens Monday on CBS. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Knew you would be. Oregon one of six at the free throw line. And the big guy showing good footsteps. Trap step couldn't finish as he got fouled. Uh, but he's such a great target. That's how they set up their cuts. And a really good upside for Christofferson at 7 2 3 0 5 in his sixth year of basketball. Imagine he was a. A soccer goalie that'll fill up the net. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't have much room, would you? Here's Royale Ivy off the dribble, oh, and there's Christofferson. So much for your attack of his abilities at the goal. He's out there again on Thomas. He's got four blocks in the game now. See, the difficulty is Thomas can't shoot it outside. Nice penetration. And this is what you want from Ford. That's his game, folks. TJ Ford with the dish, Thomas with the basket. A two point game. It was 13 at the half, Oregon led. Texas fought back to tie it up at 51 all. In the lane, short, here come the Longhorns. A chance for the tie or the lead. They have not led in the game. Under six to go. Well, Davis really gonna have to get the motor running. Ford much more active now. Can beat him baseline here. There's a pass, Thomas, jumper, no. Should that one touched last. Should foul was on Jones. Jones just rode him out of bounds. They've done a great job offensive rebounding. Excellent on that end of it. Particularly half earlier, we had eight to one on the offensive glass, but here's a great entry pass, a good look, and on the weak side, Jones just can't catch up, so therefore the discard. That the fourth team foul on Oregon, so we're in a non shooting situation still. Inbounded to Mouton. Boddicker's back on the floor, and here's Mouton driving, putting it up, not there. And Thomas just did miss yet another offensive board. Here comes Rittenauer. Pulls up and takes the three. Onions. Unbelievable. They had no break for him. The numbers were matched up, but they get it to him and let him make a decision, and great confidence. Ernie Kent letting the sophomore guard drill it. 
Red now with 18 points, four of nine from long range now in tonight's game. Mouton back outside to four. James Davis has the defensive responsibility. Nearing the five minute mark. What a cut. The little runner in the lane is not there. And another foul is called. This was on Ridnour from the back. How about them running and hustling right now? Different Texas attitude, more like a barn scene. But here, see all the numbers, everybody recovers, but he's so confident. A little nylon. Oh my goodness. Terrific out of Blaine Washington. You say that's just right on, on the, the border. border huh? Yeah, known for the peace arts, the Blaine border rights. Here's another basket and another foul on Oregon. Christofferson. That's three on the seven foot two inch center. They, they are just doing a great job getting in position, getting better shots. You can just see the aggressive nature of James Thomas. SOS. Oh. Terrific ability to elevate and then the confidence to just attack with some strength. Substitutions now. Hellquist back on for Christofferson who picks up his third and Thomas goes to the free throw line Texas at the line tonight two of six only slightly better than Oregon's two of seven two point game uh, Texas has done a better job not letting the runouts but they're scoring and getting back so Oregon's have to run a lot of half court stuff you need Jackson active I think. Here's Jackson off the dribble. Little runner foul. He'll go to the free throw line as Royale Ivy gets him from behind. Now he personifies smooth. I mean, he just plays under control. And the dilemma for Rick Barnes is that Luke Jackson sets his guy up with screens, can use the dribble effectively, and never goes too fast. The John Chaney say speed kills. It's exactly what he tries to make sure he's not going to run over anybody, Luke. Jackson gets the first, shoots one more. Ernie Kent played with that uh, group called the Kamikaze Kids, 1977. Went to Saudi Arabia, coached in Saudi Arabia for seven years. Got a chance, came back. Boyd Grant hired him as an assistant at Colorado State. And uh, he began the ascent now in his fifth year at his alma mater. This is where he said he always wanted to coach. Four point game, four and a half to go. In the lane, there's Helquist. And they're going to call the foul on the big fella from Jacksonville, Florida. Premature. God gives you big body. <laughs> Let him play a little bit. I mean, if you bump him, you're going to hit the deck. Nice step up by Hellquist. Unfortunately, he gets tagged for it. It's interesting he coached or he played under Dick Carter, who was a character in those days, a great defensive guy, and he attributes that philosophy to him. And yet they drove. Balls would be out of bounds six rows and they would be into the stands, but that's how they got the name, the Kamikaze Kids. I don't think John wouldn't like to go to MacArthur Court and play them. No, I remember those days. Now here's Ivy. He shoots one more. And this will cut it to two if successful. Boy, the horns have hung around. They said just great attitude. Barnes like attitude. Just keep clawing. Never getting their legs, but enough. Here's a little half court trap. They back it off. Ivy, best defender for Texas on Ridenour. Jackson up off the glass. What a shot. And what they did is they took advantage of the mismatch. Ford on him. Just can't elevate. Here's Ford, right side. One bouncer. Short. Jackson for Oregon. Luke Jackson has 25 in this game. Luke Ridenour has the ball in his hands as we hit four minutes. In the corner, Jackson for three. Tip. Ford. Rittenauer is the only one back. Here's Boddicker. And a foul will be called on Rittenauer, who thought he had a hell ball. Well, I guess he uh, has refereed a little bit in his lifetime. Uh, but that was one they tried to slap back, but unfortunately he didn't get a good piece. And Ford able to run it down. And here in the open floor, very unselfish play with the opportunity. And of course, the bump before the good position, and of course, all ball at the end. But Boddicker getting those puppies up and down, getting himself in position. That's three fouls on Ridenauer, and Boddicker shoots two. Substitution for Texas. Mouton comes on. 
Now he's ready for the stretch run. He had shown some fatigue. The alley-oop really knocked him out. Uh, the effort you have to expend getting back and identifying is so difficult against Oregon. Lane violation. Bonica will get another one. Yep. Elquist trying to sneak in a little early, and Thomas will make you do that. You get the quick feet around him. Uh, James can elevate and is aggressive. Bonnaker gets one more. And this would bring Texas to within. Oh, another violation, but he made it. Two. 68 66 with three minutes and 47 seconds to go. Pressure. Ball tipped around, and Roberts almost had it, but Gordon secures it for UConn. So now Deerman will have to play defense with four fouls. He's matched up against anybody? Butler. Little, little weave out here. Jim Calhoun trying to take time off the clock. But not a bad idea to be thinking Butler to finish this last 10 seconds off. Gordon to Butler, left and, open for the basket. And see, there's that, that missed foul shot, Jim, was really critical. Takes away a point, plus Deerman couldn't afford to play defense. Deerman too strong on the short one. And Talik Brown, instead of going for the break, decides that the clock is his teammate here. But boy, what a big miss on that foul shot. Deerman would have been able to come out of the game. Harrison, who's a good defender, would have been in. Might have been able to stop Connecticut from scoring. We had one more point on the board for the Salukis. So he's got a tough job right now against Robertson. Robertson drives on him. Butler again fouled by Robertson. Butler will go to the line. Very clutch down the stretch. We saw it last week at the free throw line. And now if you're Coach Weber, you don't want to take Dearman out of the ball game for the simple reason that you'd like to have him on the offensive end. You know, I thought it was interesting, Billy, what Butler said after the win against North Carolina State. He said, my team followed its leader. And I've been trying to take charge all season, but there's a time and a place for that to happen. And that was this place in Washington was the time and place to take charge, and he did. Well, when you take a look at this Connecticut team, what I think really put them over the top is that win, that overtime win at Arizona, when they made a great comeback of their own in that game to, to beat Arizona on their home floor, and they came back home with a lot of confidence. Back to a 10-point lead for UConn. Got to get some shots up quick. Roberts in the lane, Belcher. That was a two. They have not been able to do anything at all from the perimeter in this game. Tie up, Husky ball. Perimeter shooting has been their downfall really, tonight, no question. It really has. Williams had the three open looks in the first half and couldn't get any of them to fall, and that basically took away the perimeter game that they did have, or potential. Now here's a case where Connecticut with the three guards in the game. Technical foul. Technical foul has been called. On the bench. On. Coach Weber. Coach Weber. I look at him over there right now and think of the disappointment he and Gene Cady had as assistant coaches when back in 1994 in the lead eight, that outstanding Purdue team with Glenn Robinson, the big dog, got knocked off by Duke University in Grand Hill. Brandon Bouton and Bodica with a good health defense. Great job by Ford. Got a piece of the ball. Very active on the defensive end. A chance for Texas again to tie or get its first lead of the game. Bodica real active. Back to TJ Ford. Three minutes to go. Longhorns trailing by 13. Fought back with a 15 2 run. They tied this game up at 51 all. Only to fall behind by seven. Now they fought back and have a chance for the tie there. But the board comes down for Oregon's Frederick Jones. And again, the sloughing defense kept Ford, kept Ford outside. Not able to turn the corner and be creative. 2.36 to go. Ernie Kent and the Oregon Ducks want a timeout. It has been given. We'll be right back.
He uh, created a lot of problems. This has been a basically a team effort game, you know. Not one guy standing out. No. I was trying to get your vote there for the Chevy MVP oh, for see. UConn, and, and I have to agree with you. But really, there's not one standout performance here. Gordon's given them good minutes off the bench. Robertson played well. Well, the story of the game has been the guard play of Connecticut versus the guard play of Southern Illinois. When the Southern Illinois not being able to get anything whatsoever going from the perimeter, and and that is really unusual when you had such a great performance early on, particularly by Roland Roberts down inside. You should be able to get something outside. Uh, just sensational and most of it the activity keeping it in play. But now they got to come up with a stop. At complete tournament coverage at CBS.sportsline.com or America Online at our keyword CBS Sportsline. A little zone look now, Vern. 3 2 or 1 2 2. Take your choice. And at the top of the zone, that is T.J. Ford. Rittenauer has the ball in his hands. Now they switched to man-to-man. Gave him an early zone look. Jones with the penetration and Royale Ivy trying to get the puppies down to that baseline. And you see Ernie Kent trying to get his star performer untracked. I mean, he's too talented. They need him. 18 points a game. And Royale Ivy has picked up his fourth foul. Underneath, Christofferson, the bad hands. He couldn't handle it. And it was right there. Here's T.J. Ford. Pulls up, kicks it left side, back to Boddicker for three. He's got 11 off the bench for Texas. And boy, they had Jay had Thomas in the lane. They just never recognized. We near the two-minute mark. Longhorns have never led in the game. See how they slide behind the screens? He gets by. Ford, there's Christopherson with his fifth block. Oh. It's picked up by the horns. Great effort. A fresh 35 back to T.J. Ford. One of the few times T.J. Ford's been able to turn the corner. T.J. Ford, here's Ridenauer. Defensively, off the screen, Mouton. Jackson's on him. There's a screen set by Thomas. And another screen, there's the pick and roll. 15 on the shot clock with 90 seconds to go. Got to get some bumps on the baseline. Ford off the dribble. Christofferson, a just foul call. I think the big guy got him. Christofferson trying to help out. Oh, he's a wizard with that basketball. And he keeps it alive. Solid. And trying to move behind the screen. They just hear the slide, and now the counter. And just great job keeping it. And this is what normally he'll make there as Christofferson gets the bank. T.J. Ford for the season at 77%. One more for the tie. A freshman from Willow Ridge High School whose high school team won back-to-back -back state 5A titles. They went 75-1. and one. Rick Barnes said of him, He's one of the most amazing talents I've seen because his point production went down as the quality of his team went up. Well, he asked the coach, what do you need? I'm going to take over. He said, go ahead, go right ahead and do it. I mean, he has stepped up in a magnificent. And that was in a game against Oregon State when Texas came from 14 back and got the victory. They have tied it up now with 120 to go, having come from 13 down at halftime in this game. Ridnauer for Oregon. Jackson for Oregon. Jackson, usually the guy that keeps active and drags people. Catch and shoot. Oh. Ridnauer! Oh my goodness, Smuggins! So he loves big shots. Usually he, the screen. That's for two just inside the arc, less than a minute to go. TJ Ford for Texas. Chased down by Ridnauer. And he had Jackson, but wisely did not give it up. Here's Frederick Jones, final 40 seconds. And a foul is going to be called on T.J. Ford. And it all started with Luke Jackson being active without the basketball. He'll cut through the middle. There he is on the block. And using the bump outside, Johnson supplying the lift. And this guy, he just loves situations where he can put that dagger in. That only the sixth team foul of this half, a non-shooting foul. Boddicker comes back for Texas. And T.J. Ford, or rather uh, Erskine, goes to the bench. Time is called by Oregon with 38.8 remaining. Margin, working margin second half. 
Chevrolet players of the game Roland Roberts what a start he had in each half here tonight and Karan Butler for the Yukon Huskies. Well it wasn't the NCAA it was the NIT when Southern Illinois did come east and win a championship back 67. with seven. Yep with Walt Frazier and Dick Garrett and Dick Garrett the guy uh, coaching him Jack Hartman wasn't bad either no, went on the fame at Kansas State. Final eight seconds of a magnificent Cinderella run by the Salukis. Well they never got their perimeter game to match up with the good production they got out of their interior game. And as a coaching staff from Southern Illinois you'd say gee if we get that much production early inside we can stay in this game just didn't work out the Yukon Huskies are one game away from going back to a final four where they won the championship in 99 they win it here let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel 71 59 Connecticut the winner here all right Jim and Billy thank you there's the final meanwhile in Madison Wisconsin 38 seconds to play Oregon's lead is 2 70 to 68 let's join Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter 38 point eight to go non shooting foul called on Texas and Frederick Jones will inbound now for the Oregon Ducks or try to that's a dangerous play Davis had to go up and get it Freddie Williams with a foul and now Oregon will shoot free throws oh boy, that's really bailing to the inbound passer out uh, Davis with the ability speed wise to get there but how about the elevation that's just a major league catch in traffic. T.J. Ford back on for the Texas Longhorns. And James Davis goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Over the course of the season, not that often at the line. When he's been there, he's been proficient. He's a 83% free throw shooter, but this will only be the 31st free throw of the season. One and one. And they only had one rebound there. That would have been a catch on the other side if they had somebody in there. Didn't take any time. Here's the pick from Boddicker. The dish, the entry pass. Thomas deep in the post. Oh. Got it. And one. Burn, he has been free the whole second half. He ducks in with great strength and has been begging for the basketball. Here he is, really sticks his man. And now the turn and the recovery. No weak side help. No big body in there. And Johnson. Left all alone. Christofferson comes back at the line tonight. Texas 9 of 13. Thomas has an opportunity to give the Longhorns their first lead of the game. Talk about hanging in. Now this team has proven total involvement. He's one of three for the night with 23.2 to go. This for Texas first lead of the evening. No. Oregon rebound. Rittenauer has it. In a tie game. Face guard Rittenauer. I wouldn't let him touch it. Who on him? Ten to go. They want the last one. Here's Frederick Jones in the lane. Up and under. How about that call? Jones. He's been held to one basket tonight. The ability to take his guy, avoid the charge, a little dipper, figure roll. Oregon leads by two as Frederick Jones gets only his second basket of the night. He does it on the finger roll, and Oregon really knew what they wanted to do. They sure did. They took Rittenauer right out of the play, but now Texas has an option. You can run the hook and ladder, which is a throw to the top of the key, and hand it off to somebody to shoot it, or you can throw it to half court, call a timeout, and you'll have at least two seconds left. They got the big guy on the basketball, Christopherson, to impede now a timeout by Coach Ernie Kent, just to see what they were signing or doing on the floor. That the final Oregon timeout. 72-70, Oregon gets the lead with 2.8 to go on Jones' finger roll. And Vern, I think there's a mistake not playing people up the floor a little bit. And they're not on the inbounder. I didn't give it to Thomas. They ideally want to give it to Ford. 
Uh, but I think you've got to go long or get it to half court and call a timeout. It goes in the hands of James Thomas. Here's T.J. Ford. Up and no good. The tip after the buzzer. The Ducks survive. Pretty good play, Vern, to get a look like that. Diana Kent, Ernie Kent. The Texas Longhorns, a valiant effort for the sixth seed. And watch this well-designed final Texas play. Well, the ability and speed of T.J. Ford, here's the quick and the go. And right here, the defense does not want to foul. You can see Jackson challenging. The little guy almost pulls off a heck of a play, and it's no question after the buzzer. 47 years of age, five years. He said yesterday, this is all a culmination of a five-year program. And the Oregon Ducks, seated second, advanced to Sunday's game, and they will play either Kansas or Illinois. The show, final score, Oregon 72-70. Kansas and Illinois coming up shortly. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, James Thomas, for the Texas Longhorns, a double-double. Luke Jackson, 25 points and six rebounds from Oregon. Well, are we having fun yet? 72-70, the final Greg Gumbel when we come back after this. For Texas' first lead of the evening. No! Oregon rebound. Rittenauer has it. In a tie game. Face guard Rittenauer. I wouldn't let him touch it. Mouton's on him. Ten to go. They want the last one. Here's Frederick Jones in the lane. Up and under! How about that call? Jones! It's in the hands of James Thomas. Here's T.J. Ford. Up and no good! The tip after the buzzer. The Ducks survive. Pretty good. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone. Along with Clark Kellogg, I'm Greg Gumbel. And uh, first, let's show you what's upcoming this evening. Still here on CBS, Kentucky meets Maryland in Syracuse. The top seed in the East, Maryland, will take on the Wildcats. Tip time is 10.08 Eastern time. Then at about 10.16 Eastern time, make it exactly 10.16 Eastern time, it'll be Illinois against the top seed in the Midwest, and that's Kansas. That'll be Illinois and Kansas, those games still to come. What you just saw here, Oregon knocking off Texas 72-70. My partner said that the higher seeds would prevail. Not by much. <laughs> <laughs> it was a close call for Oregon. I thought Texas did a terrific job slowing Oregon down, and you can do that by pounding that offensive glass, and that's what Texas did. They were never able to gain a lead. They got tied a couple of times, and you saw that missed free throw late, and then Frederick Jones, who's done that now three times in his last seven or eight games, able to get the game winner when they spread the floor out for him. How many times in the last 24 hours have we seen the difference that a free throw made at the end of the game could make? Or missed. Or missed. 72-70. <laughs> Oregon prevails. Let's take you back out now to Madison, Wisconsin. Leslie Visser out there with the winning head coach and a couple of players. Well, they had all their ducks in a row. Congratulations to all of you. First to you, Coach. What did you want on the last shot to win, and what kind of defense did you want? Well, offensively, we ran motion. We won about three games that way. We wanted to just spread it out, and Luke, Luke or Freddie, whoever had the mismatch, it was Freddie. He made a great play. Defensively, we had Chris protect the bucket. We took Robert up. We knew Ford was going to have to make the play. Robert did a great job of double teaming. He took a tough shot and missed. Did you feel, congratulations to you, did you feel that you met your match in the transition game? They are an excellent transition basketball team. They did an outstanding job, but hey, I'm proud of my guys. We're in Elite Eight. You deserve to celebrate. And, and to you guys, look, I think uh, Pete Maravich would have been impressed. Can you talk about it out there? Uh, it was just a great win for our program and this team. Uh, we've worked hard, and it's paying off for us right now. What about the shot that you two just came down and stopped and put it up? Uh, I had confidence going, and uh, when the heat of the battle, you want to take a big shot, and I was able to knock it down just like this man did. Just like this guy, you've been doing this all year, particularly in the last seven games, your third winning shot. Talk about your shot. 
Oh, it was just, I mean, my teammates spread the core out for me and, and got me in a spot where I wanted the ball and I tried to penetrate and just get a good look and I got a lot closer to the rim than I thought. So. You guys are so entertaining to watch. Congratulations to you. Let's go.